shirt. How's Emma? She's just putting that to bed. I should think he'll be off in a minute. Off where? Dreamland. Ah. Yes, how's your sleep these days? What? Do you still have bad nights? With Ned, I mean. Oh, I see. Well, no. No, it's getting better. But you know what they say. What? They say boys are worse than girls. Worse? Babies. They say boy babies cry more than girl babies. Do they? You didn't find that to be the case? Uh, yes, I think we did. Did you? Yes. What do you make of it? Why do you think that is? I suppose boys are more anxious. Boy babies? Yes. What the hell are they anxious about? At their age, do you think? Well, facing the world, I suppose. Leaving the womb, all that. But what about girl babies? They leave the womb too? That's true. It's also true they don't make such a fuss about it. That's true. Why do you think that is? I have no answer. Do you think it might have something to do with the difference between the sexes? Good God, you're right. That must be it. What a surprise. I was having tea with Casey. Where? On the corner. I thought he lived in Hampstead or somewhere. You're out of date. Am I? He's left Susanna. He's living alone round the corner. Oh. Writing a novel about a man who leaves his wife and three children and goes to live alone on the other side of London to write a novel about a man who leaves his wife and three children. I hope it's better than the last one. The last one? Ah, oh, the last one. Wasn't that the one about the man who lived in a big house in Hampstead with his wife and three children and he's writing a novel about him? Why didn't you like it? I've told you, actually. I think it's the best thing he's written. Maybe the best thing he's written, but it's still bloody dishonest. Dishonest? In what way dishonest? I've told you, actually. Have you? Yes, she has. Once when we were all having dinner. I remember. You, me, Emma and Judith. What was it? Emma gave a dissertation over the pudding about dishonesty in Casey with reference to his last novel. Drying out. It was most stimulating. Judith had to leave, unfortunately, in the middle of it for her night shift at the hospital. How is Judith, by the way? Very well. When are we going to play squash? You're too good. Not at all. I'm not good at all. I'm just fitter than you. But why? Why are you fitter than me? Because I play squash. Oh, you're playing? Regularly? Mm. With whom? Casey, actually. Casey? <laughs> good Lord. What's he like? He's a brutally honest squash player. No, really, we haven't played for years. We must play. You were rather good. Yes, I was quite good. I'll give you a ring. Why don't you? We'll make a date. Right. Yes. We must do that. And then I'll take you to lunch. No, no. I'll take you to lunch. The man who wins buys the lunch. Can I watch? What? Why can't I watch and then take you both to lunch? Well, to be brutally honest, we wouldn't actually want a woman around, would we, Jerry? I mean, a game of squash isn't simply a game of squash. It's rather more than that. You see, first there's the game, and then there's the shower, and then there's the pint, and then there's lunch. After all, you've been at it. You've had your battle. What you want is your pint and your lunch. 
You really don't want a woman buying you lunch. You don't actually want the woman within a mile of the place, any of the places, really. You don't want her in the squash court. You don't want her in the shower. Or the pub, or the restaurant. You see, at lunch, you want to talk about squash, or cricket, or books, or even women with your friend. And be able to warm to your theme without fear of improper interruption. That's what it's all about. What do you think, Jerry? I haven't played squash for years. Well, let's play next week. I can't next week. I'm in New York. Are you? Yes, I'm going over with one of my more celebrated writers, actually. Who? Casey. Someone wants to film that novel of his you didn't like. We're going over to discuss it. It was a question of them coming over here or us going over there. And Casey felt he deserved the trip. What about you? What? Do you deserve the trip? Judith's going. No. He can't go alone. We'll have that game of squash when I get back. A week or at the most ten days. Lovely. Bye. Thanks for the drink. Bye. You have to rest. You don't want to be sleepy over dinner, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> I love Venice. Where are we going tomorrow? We're going to Torcello. It's Torcello tomorrow, isn't it? What? We're going to Torcello tomorrow, aren't we? Yes, that's right. That'll be lovely. Mm. Can't wait. Book good? Hmm, yes. What is it? This new book, this man, Spinks. Oh, that, Jerry was telling me about it. Jerry, was he? He was telling me about it at lunch last week. Really? Does he like it? Sphinx is his boy. He discovered him. Oh, I didn't know that. Unsolicited manuscript. You think it's good, do you? Yes, I do. I'm enjoying it. Jerry thinks it's good, too. You should have lunch with us one day and chat about it. Is that absolutely necessary? It's not as good as all that. You mean it's not good enough for you to have lunch with Jerry and me and chat about it? What the hell are you talking about? I must read it again myself. Now it's in hard covers. Again? Jerry wanted us to publish it. Oh, really? Well, naturally. Anyway, I turned it down. Why? Oh, not much more to say on that subject, really, is there? What do you consider the subject to be? Betrayal. No, it isn't. <laughs> isn't it? Well, what is it, then? I haven't finished it yet. I'll let you know. Well, do let me know. Of course, I could be thinking of the wrong book.
By the way, I went into American Express yesterday. Oh? Yes, I went to cash some traveler's checks. You get a much better rate there, you see, than you do in a hotel. Oh, do you? Oh, yes. Anyway, there's a letter there for you. They asked me if you were any relation, and I said yes. So they asked me if I wanted to take it. I mean, they gave it to me. But I said, no, I would leave it. Did you get it? Yes. I suppose you popped in when you were out shopping yesterday evening. That's right. Oh, well, I'm glad you got it. To be honest, I was amazed they suggested I take it. It could never happen in England. But these Italians, so free and easy. I mean, just because my name is Downs and your name is Downs, it doesn't mean that we're the Mr. and Mrs. Downs that they in their laughing Mediterranean way assume we are. We could be, and in fact, are vastly more likely to be total strangers. So let's say I, whom they laughingly assumed to be your husband, had taken the letter, having declared myself to be your husband, but in truth being a total stranger, and opened it and read it out of nothing more than idle curiosity, and then thrown it in a canal, you would never have received it, and would have been deprived of your legal right to open your own mail, and all this because of Venetian Jamon Foutisme, have a good mind to write to the Doge of Venice about it. That's what stopped me taking it, by the way, and bringing it to you. The thought that I could very easily be a total stranger. What they, of course, did not know and had no way of knowing was that I am your husband. Pretty inefficient bunch. Only in a laughing Mediterranean way. It was from Jerry. Yes, I recognized the handwriting. How is he? Okay. Good. And Judith? Fine. What about the kids? I don't think he mentioned them. They're probably all right then. If they're ill or something, he'd have probably mentioned it. Any other news? No. Are you looking forward to Torcello? How many times have we been to Torcello? Twice. I remember how you loved it. The first time I took you there, you fell in love with it. That was about ten years ago, wasn't it? About six months after we were married. Yes. Do you remember? I wonder if you'll like it as much tomorrow. What do you think of Jerry as a letter writer? You're trembling. Are you cold? No. He used to write to me at one time long letters about Ford, Maddox Ford. I used to write to him too, come to think of it, long letters about, ooh, W.B. Yeats, I suppose. That was the time when we were both editors of poetry magazines in McCambridge, near Oxford. Did you know that? We were bright young men. And close friends. Well, we still are close friends. Oh, that was long before I met you, long before he met you. I've been trying to remember when I introduced him to you. I simply can't remember. I take it I did introduce him to you? Yes. But when? Can you remember? No. You can't? No. How odd. He wasn't best man at our wedding, was he? You know he was. Ah, yes. Well, that's probably when I introduced him. Was there any message for me in his letter? I mean, in the line of business, to do with the world of publishing, has he discovered any new and original talent? He's quite talented at uncovering talent, old Jerry. No message. No message. Not even his love.
We're lovers. Ah, yes, I thought it might be something like that, something along those lines. When? What? When did you think? Yesterday, only yesterday, when I saw his handwriting on the letter before yesterday, I was quite ignorant. I'm sorry. Sorry! Where does it take place? Must be a bit awkward. I mean, we've got two kids. He's got two kids, not to mention a wife. We have a flat. Oh, I see. Nice. <laughs> a flat. It's quite well established, then, your, um, affair. Yes. How long? Some time. Yes, but how long exactly? Five years. Five years? Ned is one year old. Did you hear what I said? Yes. He's your son. Jerry was in America for two months. Did he write to you from America? Of course. And I wrote to him. Did you tell him that Ned had been conceived? Not by letter. But when you did tell him, was he happy to know I was to be a father? I've always liked Jerry. To be honest, I've always liked him rather more than I've liked you. Maybe I should have had an affair with him myself. Tell me, are you looking forward to our trip to Torcello? <laughs> 